In today's episode of Ancient Predators, we go back well before the time of humans in the Ice Age, back to 60 million years ago to the Paleocene, just after the extinction of the dinosaurs. A time where the first giant flightless predatory birds roamed the world and primates began to emerge. But these aren't the animals we're covering in today's video. We are covering an animal that sends shivers down the spine whenever you hear its name, Titanoboa. Titanoboa is an extinct genus of very large snake that lived in what is now La Guajilla in northeast Colombia. They could reach lengths of up to 100 foot and reach a body mass of 1,800 kg. The only known species is Titanoboa serionensis, the largest snake ever discovered. In modern constrictors like boids and pythonids, increased body size is achieved through the larger vertebrae rather than increasing the number of bones making up the skeleton allowing for length estimates to be based on individual bones rather than the amount of bones. Weight was determined by comparing Titanoboa to the extinct green anaconda and the southern rock python, resulting in a weight between 652 and 1819 kg. These estimates far exceed the largest modern snakes, which are the green anaconda and the reticulated python. The existence of eight additional specimens of similar size to the one used in these calculations implies that Titanoboa reached such massive proportions regularly. Vertebrae morphology places the snake in the family of Boanai, alongside other constrictors of the Americas, such as anacondas. The skull material later confirmed Titanoboa's initial placement within the family. The giant snake was connected to both Old World and New World boids, and suggested that the two lineages must have diverged by the Paleocene at the latest. This would place Titanoboa at the stem of Boanae. Due to the warm and humid greenhouse climate of the Paleocene, the region of what is now Sidi Horn was covered by wet tropical rainforests that covered the coastal plains that housed larger river systems, which were inhabited by various freshwater animals, especially reptiles. Among the native reptiles are three different types of dryosaurs that survived the extinction event that wiped out the dinosaurs independently from modern crocodiles. The genera that coexisted alongside Titanoboa included the large, slender snouted Achenerontisuchus, the medium sized but broad headed Anthricosuchus, and the small Serahonosuchus, which may have been relatively more terrestrial than its relatives. Turtles also thrived in the tropical wetlands of Paleocene Columbia, giving rise to several species of considerable size, such as Serahonomies and Carbonomies. The rainforests of the Sirihorn Formation mirror modern tropical forests in regards to the families that make up much of the vegetation. However, unlike today, these Paleocene forests were relatively low in diversity. Although it is possible that this low diversity is the result of the wetland nature of the depositional environment, samples from other localities corresponding with this time frame suggest that the forests arose shortly following the Cretaceous mass extinction. This would indicate that the low plant diversity of the time may be a direct result of the mass extinction preceding it. Plants found in these Paleocene forests include Zingenibraceae, Salvinia, and Araceae. Current research points towards Titanoboa being Piscivorous, meaning it primarily ate fish. Although it would have also eaten other reptiles and amphibians, including large crocodiles and giant turtles. Most of Titanoboa's life was probably spent in the water. Although it had the ability to go on land, there probably weren't enough large prey animals to support the snake long term. Additionally, the immense weight of the snake would have especially been felt while on land. This would have made it uncomfortable and could have even been harmful to the snake. As a result, it likely stayed in the water whenever possible. From the snake's bony palate and the number of teeth it had, it probably ate large bony fish and lungfish. Although most of these fish are extinct today, a few species still remain, including bone tongues and moon eyes. A study was complete in 2009, correlating the gigantism observed in Titanoboa with the climate conditions of its environment. Titanoboa's internal temperature and metabolism were heavily dependent on the ambient temperature, which would in turn affect the animal's size. 
Large ectothermic animals are typically found in the tropics and decrease in size the further they move away from the equator. Following the correlation, researchers suggest that the mean annual temperature can be calculated by comparing the maximum body size of ectothermic animals found in two localities. Based on the relation between temperatures in the modern neotropics and the maximum length of anacondas, researchers calculate a mean annual temperature of at least 32 to 33 Celsius for the equatorial region of Paleocene South America. The estimates are consistent with a hot Paleocene climate model suggested by a study published in 2003. Although we don't know the exact reason why Titanoboa went extinct, we can have a pretty accurate guess. Climate change most likely contributed to the disappearance and extinction of most of Titanoboa. The declining global temperatures favoured the emergence of smaller snakes. Larger reptiles were slowly erased and smaller snakes and other reptiles took their place in the ecosystem. The rapid drop in temperatures made the metabolic process of Titanoboa difficult. Habitat change also contributed to the extinction of Titanoboa. Rainforests reduced and made way for grasslands. Titanoboa therefore lacked proper habitat they disappeared and paved the way for the smaller snakes that we see today. Thanks for watching today's video. I loved covering this terrifying snake. If you enjoyed and wish to see more, then please like and subscribe. Also, leave a comment down below if you have any suggestions for future videos or series. Thank you.